My name is Elena Jean and I'm a documentary filmmaker. And today we're gonna be looking for a rare species of snake on Vancouver Island. We're gonna be meeting up with wildlife biologist and conservationist, Rebecca Golat. <laughs> Rebecca's specialty is in herpetology, which is the study of reptiles, which I'm particularly excited about because I love reptiles but I'm no expert. The little I do know about these snakes is that they're called sharp-tailed snakes, and that finding these sharp-tailed snakes isn't gonna be easy. My name is Rebecca Golat, and I work as a wildlife biologist. I work in mostly herpetology, so reptiles and amphibians, and I dabble in ornithology and sometimes uh, entomology as well, which is birds and insects. All the ologies. <laughs> Snake kit is ready to go. We have um, artificial cover objects set up, and those are like what attract the snakes. You would never really be able to find one without that. <laughs> and they're pretty hard to find. They're just emerging out of hibernation, so they're gonna go straight to those ACOs, and they're gonna be warming up as much as they can. <laughs> So what is this ecosystem that we're in right now? This is a Gary Oak a Meadow ecosystem, and it's one of the rarest ecosystems in Canada. And we have only about 10% of it, of like natural Gary Oak Meadow left. It's a perfect habitat for them. Are sharp-tailed snakes found throughout Canada elsewhere? No. Nope. Or it's just in BC? It's just Vancouver Island and Pemberton. That we know so far. That we know so far. There hasn't been very much um, data collected on, this, on these species, which is what we're trying to do today. Today we're doing the, actually the first survey of the season for sharp-tailed snakes. The first survey of the season? Yeah, so it's uh, early March and this is about the time they're going to be emerging from their hibernaculums. Okay, so that's what this is all for here. Yeah, so this is um, part of a mark recapture project where we're implanting an adult snake with a tag. So the, Okay, so the tag will come up on the reader. Yeah, yeah, so I will be reading around any potential like good habitat, even this like um, this dead log here looks like a great spot for one. So I'll be like trying to see if I can get a reading and then when I do this it'll pop up with a number. This could be it. And this was the first ACO that we checked under. There is nobody there, which is expected. <laughs> uh, ACO is an artificial cover object. For these particular ACOs, they're a piece of asphalt, and that's gonna absorb the sun, and it's gonna be a nice warm spot to, that will attract the snakes. Oh, it feels warm. Okay, I'm just thinking. When I started this job, I think it was three weeks before I actually saw one in the flesh. <laughs> so it doesn't look good <laughs> for us today. Right, we yeah. might not find them today. We might not find them, which is a huge part of this work. It sometimes will drive you crazy because you're like, do they even exist? <laughs> they are a nocturnal and semi so they're burrowing underneath the ground. They're a pretty hard snake to find, and let alone study the population dynamics. Why, why do we do this kind of work? Why do you do this work? So I do this work because this is my dream job, but this is also such important work. How are we able to protect the species that we know nothing about? If we're able to understand species a bit better and their habitat use, we're able to better make you know, development projects and construction projects and things that are coming up that are gonna happen anyway, but we're able to work together a little bit more. Wake up. Nothing. It's not looking hopeful. No. <laughs> what? It's a baby alligator lizard. That is not what I expected to see. So it's an alligator lizard. Yeah, juvenile. One baby lizard, but no snakes. Yeah. So at this point I decided to take things into my own hands. This is when we're going to find one. Yeah, right? You're going to find our first snake of the season. I could see how your arm will get sore. It's not dissimilar to a camera. Yeah, like... You know, your one arm is jacked and the rest is... Especially after like three hours of it. Yeah. Spoiler alert, I didn't have any luck either. Where are you guys? Like it feels like they should be out. The other thing too is like, 
we had like a record drought last year. I'm not sure what that drought did to the population. Like there could have been a lot of die off. Their, their main threat is habitat loss. So with climate change, like every year's gonna be a little bit different. Is there kind of fear in the community about the climate crisis? There's always like a, some deep, deep rooted fear, but we're the ones that are trying to work on reversing that and mitigating it. So we can't be in fear all the time because we have to be like looking forward and working forward, feeling hopeful, seeing more naturalists, I'm seeing more diversity in science mm -hmm. and I'm seeing more young women and people of color in science. And you don't have to be a professional biologist or professional scientist to be a really awesome naturalist. Yeah. I think it just starts with that curiosity. Like be curious and start with passion and be critical. And if you have the passion, it will come. So the sun came out today and we were able to find our first sharp-tailed snake of the season. Uh, this is a female that we caught last year and she is just gorgeous. I can't get over it. First thing we'll do is check to see if she's got a tag. This is like really exciting to see that she survived the winter and she survived the drought from last year and she's ready to go have her first meal for the season. I've seen probably over a hundred, but every time you see another one, even if it's the same one, it's pretty exciting. And yeah, this is our first sharp-tailed snake of the season. It's still a species that is kind of uh, the unloved and the understudied and I think deserves our attention.